in need of a DJ, which is not me. Let's see, did I get that right? Woo, yeah. We are live, we are recording, and in case you couldn't hear that the first time, we are in need of a DJ. And we have two, I think two of Kim's. I don't know, somebody just said twins here. We had an upside down realtor a moment ago. She's still here, which is awesome. We, <laughs> we have mortgage lenders, we have attorneys, we have past clients, current clients, we have friends and family. And we are here. It is Celebrate Your Success Sunday, and we are here learning how to win that bidding war, save a life, get your dream home, and get your dream job. Now, how is that happening, and why am I here? Well, my name is Erica Rose Siegel, and I'm your grateful realtor. I am with Heller Williams Greater Nassau, and I am on a mission to facilitate the sale of a minimum of one million homes to financially, spiritually, emotionally, and physically assist the victims of domestic violence around the world. Why? Because one out of four women and one out of nine men have been impacted by domestic violence. And those are pre-pandemic pre statistics. And you know what? I was one of those stats and I'm not okay with that. And instead of just being okay, I'm here to make a difference. So not only are we here to help people sell more homes, make more money, we're here to change more lives. And 10% of everything I earn for the rest of my life will be going towards charity. So if you're buying through the Celebrate Your Success crew and you come to me, I will divvy up whoever's gonna help you anywhere in the world. Make sure that they go towards charity to change lives. And it will be a charity of your choice related to domestic violence and also another charity that can impact your life that matters to you. And why are we here tonight? Well, in addition to doing all that cool stuff, we're also here to impact agents, buyers, sellers, and we're here to help you make more money or earn more money, or save more money, protect your money. We're here to do that as quickly as possible. Because when we do that, we save lives, we have fun. Yes, we have fun! And we are here to make a profound difference in the world. And I love being with all of you. I love that I don't even know we have these people in this room. And some of you are here for the first time, and some of you are here twice. And some of you have neighbors or guests with you. So I'm going to kick it over to our speaker. I can't even find her in the Zoom room, but I'm sure she's somewhere. Oh, there she is. I'm here. Brittany, move yeah. on. Can you get closer to the screen? I sure. Feel like yeah, come join me. Better? Like we, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're better. Okay, cool. So Brittany, we're super excited to have you. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. And you recently joined the Celebrate Your Success crew with open arms. And we're super grateful. And I want to know why and how did you get involved? So it's pretty funny, actually, you called me on my birthday to wish me yeah, a happy she, birthday, which was huge actually, yeah, because not many background. people pick up the phone, the um, you know, they'll the, shoot a text or whatever, but you picked up the phone, you called me, you told me about what you were doing. I really connected with it. Um, okay. As you were explaining that you're going to give you're back good. to victims of domestic violence and everything. Um, I myself was in a situation not long before I met you where, you know, it was abusive, toxic, everything like that. Um, so when you told me what you were doing and what your mission was, it really spoke to me um, genuinely. So, you know, I love to be a part of helping you and helping victims and doing everything we can to help them feel safe and get out of the situation that they're in and know that there's a place that they can go for help. Uh, along with that, you know, I love helping first time home buyers and just buyers in general, achieve the dream, purchase their first home, their second home, their investment property, whatever the case may be. So you and I share those two missions and I'm really grateful that you invited me to come along. Um, and you know, it's funny when we met years ago, when I was first getting into sales, it was not long after my incident with a violent relationship. So I feel like there was a reason why we crossed paths at that point. And you know, it's led us to this now and this journey and this great, event that we'll be hosting every Sunday night. So I really appreciate you involving me in all of this. So I uh, actually really appreciate you being here because I have to tell you, and I'm, I'm trying something new here with pinning speakers. So if it looks weird, it's because I'm trying to see how that works on Facebook. So if you're watching this and it's working for you, let us know. If it doesn't, we'll try again next time. I am not a <laughs> producer. <laughs> Right, like I want to get close and personal with the people who are talking, so I'm just gonna try that for now. Um, but Brittany brought up, brought up a really important point to me that I want you guys all to hear. When I met her, which was almost what ten years ago, is that right? Yeah, long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago, and I had no idea, no idea, that she was in an unhappy relationship. Unhappy, and that's an understatement. And 
you never know who you might be standing next to, who you might be near that is not happy because they put on a happy face. And I tell you, I was miserable and looked happy on Facebook. And I called, I called Brittany recently and this, I was not miserable. I mean, I just called because her life was just like in my eyes, like it was what I wanted. I had no idea about her past, but I knew that this beautiful individual that hopefully is being highlighted, if she's being highlighted on Facebook or on your computer, if you can write in the chat somewhere and let us know, this beautiful face was a homeowner. She had a daughter. She um, had a business. She was a mortgage lender. And uh, she was running a business that was a great counterpart to me. And I thought to myself, I just want to wish this beautiful soul a happy birthday. I had no idea that when I met her 10 years ago, that I was little Miss Sunshine happy running around the office and she was suffering, right? Like, I, I don't know if I'm saying those words right. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And I just yeah. am so thankful that you're trusting us to be here today to talk about this because it's super important also to give us the gift of your knowledge, your expertise. And before we have you really just dive into mortgages and everything we need to know, and my phone is going off, I think people are still registering. Look at this. They can't stop, won't stop. It. They want to get a piece of you. Uh, I want you guys to know this show is about your success. And that's why you notice I took I wanted to highlight Brittany for most of this show because she is a success and I want everyone to be able to see themselves in her and where they might've been, whether it maybe it wasn't domestic violence, maybe they just had a bad breakup. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they lost the house of their dreams. They're feeling defeated. And this is about celebrating your success. So if while we're interacting here, you have questions, you have comments, you want to say something, don't be shy. Put your questions and comments in the chat and we'll call you up. We'll engage because we're here for you in service of you. And we created this show. But it's created by you. Like last week we said, who wants to go next? And Brittany was like, I'll go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was it. Here we are. So Brittany, back to you. I think we have, um, but I do mean that interrupt us, whether you're watching live on the Facebook, YouTube, on Facebook, on YouTube, and just let us know Co questions, comments along the way, because you might say, how did you get out of it? How did she make it happen? How is she standing here? What did it really look like? Or you might say, I have a question about my own mortgage. I have a question about whatever. You came here wanting to win something, learn something. And we want to make sure you walk away with that. Okay. So don't be shy. And I'm on. All right. So huh, back to, and you, you definitely had some experience and I, with, with that relationship and I, whatever you want to share, share. I know you shared a little bit, um, share as much as you want. And then I know that, um, you know, you have experiences not only navigating tough situations in a, in a relationship, you also have experience navigating bidding wars. And uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your mortgage experience and how you've been able to win bidding wars for your clients and how you basically got out. You know, maybe you want to give a quick, how you got out of what you were in. But yeah, was so just just a little rundown of, you know, my past and my experience in the mortgage business and everything, um, you know, not long before I met you at that point, I had just gotten into the mortgage business. I come from a family full of people in the business. My mother, my sister, my fiance were all in the mortgage business. So naturally, I fell into this business as well. So, so I started as a loan officer assistant. Um, I've been in pretty much every aspect of the business from wholesale to processing and underwriting. Um, and now I'm in sales. So it took a while to get where I'm at. I have a lot of experience and that's really what helps me get my clients the homes that they want. I mean, if you know what's going on right now in the, in the industry, inventory is very low and there's a lot of buyers because interest rates are still very low. So you need to make sure that you're working with somebody that has the programs and the tools to be able to get you the home of your dreams. Um, you know, I have a lot of programs for first time home buyers specifically but also for anybody in general. So that's really what helps me win bidding wars. Um, a specific scenario that I just went through, I had a client that came to me through the realtor actually, um, and they wanted this house. This was their house. She was a single mother, um, has her two little kids. This was the end all be all. And her lender that she was working with said, I can't get you to go conventional. You can only go FHA. Now the listing agent, 
didn't think the property would pass an appraisal for FHA and they were not willing to do any repairs on the property. So she was frustrated and the agent put her in touch with me and I was able to get her a conventional mortgage and now her and her family are closing on their home tomorrow. So for me, it's little things like that that make me love my job so much and little things like that where I get to know my clients, I get to know their specific scenario. I actually look at everything on paper, but speak to them too. So I can make something work. You know, that's, that's what I like to do. I like the challenge of making things work for people. So that's, you know, that's really what goes hand in hand with winning these bidding wars and everything. It's just making your offer stand out and giving them what they want in order to get your house. Well, and you know, you really, you do stand out and I really appreciate you for that. And um, I think what, what really stands out for me with you is how much you care and how much you love people. Yeah, it, it is so obvious. And that is why I know that you're part of a winning team and why your love for the industry helps people get what they want. And I also like just hearing, I know I promised this yesterday, so I'm going to hold on. I'm just going to do something since I'm talking. How do I do this? Give me, ba, ba, ba. there we go. <laughs> so just a real quick, I just wanted to add this. And again, interact questions, raise your hand. And if someone is like, Hey, Eric, I got a question. Hey, Britt, I got it. Brittany, I got a question. Just don't, we're here. This is not like, you know, regular school. This is, this is, yeah. Zoom. <laughs> this is Zoom fun. And here to celebrate you guys becoming homeowners, becoming the best realtors imaginable. Uh, I'm sorry, Rebecca, you got a question. Hey, yeah. I'd like to hear Brett, uh, Brittany's um, advice for first time buyers who perhaps need to do some credit repair or additional savings, you know, what, what are some solid concrete steps that first time home buyers can expect to um, do to get ready to make that first big purchase? That's a great question. Um, I have a lot of people that come to me sometimes and they're like, yeah, we just want to get an idea as to what we can afford, but we don't want you to pull our credit. It's, it's going to drop our score. We're not yeah. going to plummet your score. But I need to look at your credit as a whole because that goes in with your income and your assets and everything. So if I can't look at your credit, I'm not going to be able to give you a pre-approval that's accurate. So that's a big portion of your pre-approval. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing this long enough. And like I said, I've been in every aspect of the mortgage business where I can look at a credit report and really help people navigate and get to where they need to be if they even need work on their credit. Uh, a lot of people are nervous. They just don't know. So they don't want to pull their credit. And then we pull it and it's like, you're fine. You know, there's no minimum credit score. There's always things that we can do to help you fix your credit in order to get to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, as far as first time home buyers, I do a lot of work with Long Island Housing Partnership, CDC Long Island, um, a few different grant programs that I can combine with the State of New York program. Mm -hmm. The State of New York offers a program called Sony May, which not a lot of lenders have. So people do come to me sometimes and say, you know, I heard about these grant programs, but this lender that I went to said they had no idea they couldn't do it, or they were trying to offer me this instead of that. So we do have the ability to do this first time homebuyer program through the state of New York, where you get a lower interest rate, you get lower mortgage insurance premiums, and you also get what's called down payment assistance. So you get 3% of the purchase price towards the transaction, which could be up to $15,000, which is huge. So, you know, where somebody may be ready to purchase and they only have a down payment, they don't have the closing costs, we could potentially offer them that program and then they're in their house. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Or if somebody has the money, but the house that they want to qualify for is a little bit above what they qualify for. So what we say is, all right, well, if we give you the down payment assistance, put that towards your down payment and there you go, you qualify. So there's little things that I have the ability to offer to my clients that really make a huge difference. Uh, between them having to wait and save money or purchase now and take advantage of the rates because I'm sure everybody knows rates are at an all-time low right now. So, Great. Thank you so much. We got a question too about renovations. We do. And before you answer that, I also just want to point out something that I just want to make sure you guys know. So let's see. Uh, Brittany mentioned New York. Like she does mortgages, I think mainly in New York. Is that right? But you do have yeah. Google and so, but I want to also point something out. So she, this information she's providing as far as where she can service is technically New York. And mm -hmm. I do know we spoke about this less than an hour ago. I don't know if it was before or after the shower, but we definitely spoke <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, but we spoke about it that 
whether you're buying or selling in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Indonesia, Indianapolis, I have clients here that move to Mississippi. I have realtors here that are in uh, DC, Maryland area. I've got people here that are all over. I'm actually forgetting where Raina and Craig are from. Like people are all over and I love it. I love to see all of these people here. I know people are in Florida, California. We've got people, I don't even recognize half the people. This is the biggest group we've ever had to date, by the way, Brittany, good for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, girlfriend. But I want to know that these questions, maybe, maybe, maybe like the actual where she can service is one location, but the app, we can find you come to me and I will help you anywhere in the world. Okay. I'll say that again. Um, come, come we've, we've got, um, Evan's got a question, Brittany, about the, if assistance funds can be used for other things like renovations. Yes. Funds yep. referring to? Okay. Yeah, so the state of New York also offers what's called the Neighborhood Revitalization Act. Um, and so with this program, you're able to get up to $20,000 worth of reno renovation funds to repair the home. The only catch is the home has to be vacant at the time of the appraisal. But as long as it is, you can get $20,000 worth of repair funds and anything over the $20,000, you can roll into your loan amount. Now, the cool thing about that is you can, you can combine that with the down payment assistance. So not only can you get 3% of the purchase price, but you can also get 20 grand to renovate the property that you're purchasing, which oh. is huge right, right now because of inventory being so low, people are buying location. They're not buying the actual house itself. They just want to be in a specific area, uh, you know, a land size, whatever the case may be. So they, they're looking to renovate their houses. So if you could take advantage of those grants and save some money and make that house really what you want, that's huge. <laughs> There's also, um, and Brittany, speak to this more thoroughly than me as a realtor, but I know that the um, there's a special type of FHA loan. I believe it was 203K yep. that will roll the renovation costs into the loan. Yes. But it, you have to get like bids from contractors and stuff, I believe. Yeah, right? so we have, okay. we have the FHA one and the conventional one. So they work pretty similar in that sense where you have to get a licensed insured contractor in the property and get the repairs written up and everything like that. But again, it's a really good program for especially first time home buyers that want to buy their dream home and stay there and they want to make it theirs. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, you buy something for a little bit cheaper in the area you want. You roll in those renovation costs. Yeah. If you don't qualify for the grants that the 203K program is a great program. And we also have conventional renovation programs, which is not only a purchase program, it's also a, a refinance purchase, uh, program. So mm -hmm. if you're just looking to spruce up your home a little bit, that's a good option for you as well. Well, the FHA program is available nationwide. Yeah. Kim, what you what you going to ask? Huh? You got your I, hand. I, I'm pretty sure the VA was doing something like that as well, but I don't know if they are still offering that program. We have a really good VA program through the state of New York. I know I'm talking a lot specifically about New York, but we have a really good program through the Sony May for VA uh, loans as well, which offers the similar, the low um, interest rate, the low mortgage insurance premium, everything like that. Sometimes I get veterans that come to me looking for a VA loan and it actually makes more sense to go Sony May through their VA program than it does to go with the VA program. Because mm -hmm. while you're not paying mortgage insurance, you're paying a funding fee when you go through VA. Whereas if you take the Sony May loan, you could potentially buy the mortgage insurance up front with the assistance and then you're not paying a funding fee and you're not paying mortgage insurance, plus you're getting that low interest rate. So you know, this all goes hand in hand with winning these bidding wars and getting into these homes. It's just having the availability to offer these programs to my clients where I can find a fit for anybody. And if I can't find the fit today, we'll, we'll put a plan in motion for you so that you do qualify down the line. Outstanding. Outstanding. And Ronald was asking, uh, did these assistance programs apply to uh, the purchase of condos and co-op situations? Yep. Okay. Condos and co-ops are eligible as well. And Edmund had a question, but I'm not exactly sure what he wants to ask. I saw that 3% can you use towards the down payment. So okay. when you go to, to sign a contract, and this is a really important factor into winning bidding wars and stuff now, which I was going to speak on as well. Um, you can use that down payment assistance towards the bottom line at the closing table. So you're not getting a check in hand. It's just coming off the bottom line due at closing. So for that loan program, you potentially could only put 1% of your own funds and qualify. So if you get grants from a bunch of different programs and combine them, you still have to put something down at contract signing. So say you go to the contract signing and you put the 3% down. 
then when the funds get applied at the closing table, there's an excess of money there because you only have to have the 1%, you get your money back. So because you're putting money as a down payment doesn't necessarily mean it's your full down payment for your loan, which is another thing that I tell my clients nowadays when they're putting offers in on homes, you know, the buyer pool is, is huge right now and the inventory is minimum. So what I tell my clients is just because you say, okay, I'm going to offer them 5% down or 10% down. That's a good faith deposit. That's not your down payment. Your down payment for your mortgage and your good faith deposit are two different things. Mm -hmm. The seller's getting their proceeds either way. So if you put 5% down at contract signing just to stand out from everybody else's three, three and a half, whatever the case may be, that doesn't mean that that has to be your down payment for your mortgage. So we can apply the, the additional funds towards your closing costs as well so that you're only putting the minimum of 3% down and you're getting the house, you know? Wow. Okay. And just to speak on that too, you can also use, I don't know if you heard before, but you can use the down payment assistance to buy out your mortgage insurance for the Sony May loan as well. Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. and I think that there was someone, I actually have a question too, which I'll ask in a second. Um, sorry, I'm not typing in the chat. <laughs> but I, I think that someone was coming off mute maybe to ask. Um, I think it was... was was it going to do, do I, the question I had was that would, does a three percent it could be used towards closing costs for anything, and it's and if they don't use it then the, the, the borrower takes the money back or it's it's towards the purchase. So the borrower cannot take the money back. So you wouldn't take the you mean the down payment assistance you're speaking about? No, I'm talking about the three percent. It's a concession, right? The, the, the three percent for the closing costs is a is, it, is that added to the price? It's not it's a concession. So the way that it works, and that's that's mm -hmm. a really good point too, because mm -hmm. right now to get a seller's concession accepted is very hard because there's again right. so many buyers, little inventory. So it's Correct. not a concession. It's the second lien on the property for ten years. If the buyer mm -hmm. sells the property prior to the ten years, it's prorated. So they don't owe the full amount back, but they owe a certain amount back. If they stay okay. in the property for 10 years, it's forgiven and it automatically falls off. So it's just the second lien sitting on the property, no interest, no payments, nothing at all. And then after 10 years, it's forgiven. And that's the same as the neighborhood revitalization program with the renovation. Right. So if they get that down payment assistance plus the neighborhood revitalization and they stay in that property for 10 years, it falls off, which is very different from a concession because a concession... Yeah. The seller has to accept it. And then when the seller sees your offer in their eyes, say you're asking for a $10,000 concession, the house has to appraise for the price plus the concession. If it that's doesn't, okay. right. you don't get that concession. So a seller is going to look at two offers and say, this one has a concession. This one doesn't. I'm mm -hmm. going to go with the one that doesn't, because if my house doesn't appraise, these people are probably going to back out because they don't have the funds to close. So right. with the Sony May program, it's great because their proceeds are their proceeds. They don't even have to know that you're getting a grant. You're going for, it's a conventional mortgage, the Sony May mortgage. Mm -hmm. You're going for a conventional mortgage. You're putting your down payment. They're getting their proceeds. There's nothing with the appraisal. You're good to go. So it's different how in much, that how sense. Much asking, how much are they asking to put down usually? What's the minimum so, amount? It really depends on the, the attorneys and the sellers and everything at that point, You know how much they okay. want you to put down, how much skin in the game they want you to have. But again, what I was saying before, you know, just because you're putting 5%, 10% down at contract signing, that doesn't mean that that has to be your down payment when it comes to the mortgage purposes. So if you want to show them that you're serious and you want to move forward and you want to put 10, 20,000 down, if you have it, you can do that. And then you just let me know, hey, Britt, we only want to put the minimum down, but we're just doing this to show them that we're serious and we want this house. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Of course. Yeah, Blanca had a question. She was wondering if um, the programs and grants that you were speaking of are only for first-time home buyers, or can are they income-based for anyone? They're income-based for first-time home buyers. And what a first-time home buyer is anybody that has not owned a home in the last three years. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that's you know, there's people that have owned properties in the past and mm -hmm. then sold and have been renting or whatever. So they're considered first-time home buyers again. Great. And Brittany, is that just um, for that, is that a, I call it a COVID special. That's not what it really means. But is that just the, um, because of the CARES Act, the 900, almost 900 page act that we can, that is the first time home buyer for the last three years, or is that in general? That's been the case. Yeah, that's been the case for, since the program's been offered. You know, if you haven't owned a property in the last three years, you're a first time home buyer. Nice. Okay. And I also, and then I know Rebecca is so good at reading the questions. There's probably questions in the chat. So I'm going to go back to you in a second. I just wanted to address Ronnie really quick because he's a past client. He's a friend. He's also part of the celebrate your success crew. 
absolutely these programs qualify for co-ops and condos however yep. what i suggest to do i just want to like not like overstep something that's super important go to a co-op realtor wherever you're looking to buy a co-op anywhere in the world i happen to be an expert when it comes to co-ops i happen to have sold ronnie's co-op i happen to have moved into mississippi but you want to make sure that you talk to the just because you are issued a pre-approval letter with something and they say yes you can use this on a co-op condo if the co-op condo has a requirement for 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25 percent down, even though Brittany will say, yeah, you're good to go, you can absolutely buy. If the co-op condo has a specific rule or regulation that actually, no, you can buy, but or and you also have to have 20 percent down, you need to follow that rule as well. So it's like an extra layer. So I just didn't want to overstep that. And then I'm just going to kick it back to Brittany and then Rebecca. No, that's a really good point. Um, like you said, I can issue a pre-approval and tell you, well, usually when I talk to clients that are looking for a co-op, I will tell them that most co-ops are a minimum of 10 to 20% down. So you need to check with your realtor to make yeah. sure that you're you know, offering the right amount for your down payment and everything. So that's for sure. Um, we do offer them on condos, co-ops, even the renovation grant you can use on co-ops and condos too, but you do have to make sure the co-op board is okay with it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. And thank you for that. And I have, we have someone that that's writing, uh, they've owned a co-op. They're looking to buy another co-op. Look how cool that is. Um, she's, I think this, is this the one that's a teacher? Is that Blanca the teacher? That's Blanca. Yes. Blanca's a teacher. I've known her for a while now. We live, she lives in Patchogue right near where my condo was before we, we moved. Oh my gosh. So good. Um, I have yeah. a question for you, but I'm going to go back to Rebecca because I might've missed a question in the chat. So I'm gonna, Rebecca, what do we have in the chat that I might've missed? Or are we up to four? I think, I think we're good. I think we're up up to speed here. If anybody else has questions, just type them in and we'll they'll be keeping an eye on them. Amazing. I love this teamwork, guys. The teamwork makes the dream work. And then I also, because um, <clears throat> I know there were a few more things I think I want to ask you, but something that came to mind sure. as well is retirement, TDA, 401k, annuity, like all of that stuff. There's a lot of people out here right now. So I just want it not just from the realtor who... Maybe they might think, oh, that's nice. She really, that's, you know, she's not a professional. This is not what she does for a living. I want to hear it from the mortgage lender's mouth. <laughs> and then we've got a lawyer on the call. and We've got realtors in New Jersey too. Yes, Jessica Dietz, I actually missed that. And if you're a realtor in another state, you want to be acknowledged, put your name in the chat. Um, but I want to check in uh, that retirement plans, like you mentioned, and I want to hear these numbers. Like, I think we can borrow up to 100000 from retirement or 50% to be able to buy a home right now? Is that accurate? Yeah. Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, I mean, it's honestly, it's up to whatever retirement plan and everything you have, but retirement funds for what, everything like that is usable for, for purchasing Hello. a home. Usually you have to, you have to file. With, hi. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Usually you would have to do something like um, a hardship withdrawal or something like that to show that you're purchasing a home and you just have to get the documentation to show that you're moving forward on purchasing a home and you're able to pull that money out and use it towards purchasing. Got it. And I think from what I'm understanding, because, and I guess it's a case by case basis. So if anyone's mm -hmm. looking to do something unique, um, you know, talk to Brittany and if Brittany doesn't service that neighborhood, she can come to me. I can find someone. We can work together because I've sold homes in Florida, California, Texas, Tennessee, like you name it. So we're here to help sell homes, save lives and help people earn more and save more and change the world together. And Evan has a question in a moment, but yeah, they can borrow from what I'm understanding that they can borrow no penalty and they pay the interest back to themselves. Is exactly. That so the best person to borrow from is yourself, obviously. So you're not getting hit with that debt. Or anything like that. That's, you know, if, if you're going to borrow from anybody, that's what I always tell everybody that comes to me that says, you know, I could get a gift from so and so, but I have my retirement. In my eyes, I'd rather borrow from myself than borrow from my family and just, you know, use my money, my hard earned money that I've been storing away for something like the biggest purchase of my life. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think just hearing that again, going back to, again, the mission or just like in general, like let's just say you're homeschooling, you're home teaching, you're home exercising, you're home working, you're home. And you're hating your home. You're like, I can't be here anymore. I thought I was going to sleep here, have dinner here a couple of nights a week. And now I'm ready to, you know, strangle, you know, someone in my home because it's not what I originally planned on Erica or Jessica or Rebecca or whoever realtor here that's still, you know, here, or I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted. Get me out. And you can borrow and you can borrow from yourself. And if you're 30, 40, 50, you're not near retirement yet, borrow from yourself Instead yeah. of wanting to strangle yourself or someone else, and I'm not trying to be graphic, I'm trying to be serious. 
you know, I'm like, this place seems sold to me. So you can do that and you can do that without penalties. And the interest is borrowing from yourself, yeah. your back yourself. And I really want to put that out there because then it could be saving marriages. That could be saving, like, <laughs> or that could be breaking up the relationships that don't need to stay together, right? Like, if you're like, I can't afford to leave, I have no money. You got a job for 20, 30 years, you might have retirement and you can make a move. I, I just wanted to check. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point, definitely. Okay, awesome. I think Evan had a question for us too. I never trust a skinny chef. Uh oh. <laughs> well, then someone might have their child and there's a skinny chef, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who the skinny chef is, but does a skinny chef want to cook for me? I don't know. Um, I live in Bayside, New York. One, one, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, Rebecca, there's a question from Evan. Do you want to read it? Yeah, Evan is asking, if you take a loan from a 401k, does that loan get used against you in your debt to income ratios? No. There wow. you go, Evan. Simple there, answer. There, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. That is interesting. So none, th this is news to me. So nothing, not a, so if you're buying, wow, guys, so this is really, I just want to, because co-ops, at least where I'm from, and I feel like in other areas, they're, they're probably one they of them. They do their own, but they do their own income calculations. They do their own debt to income ratios, things like that. Co-ops oh. are a whole different animal because they have their own pre-approval process really and they could turn around and tell you no and not give you a reason so co-ops are a little tricky because you're not buying the individual unit you're just buying shares in the corporation essentially so it's a little harder to get approved with co-ops and everything but on the flip side they're more affordable um, right the closing costs are a lot cheaper on a co-op as in comparison to a single family residence or a condo even so there's benefits and there's downsides to buying a co-op yeah. Yeah. And so, and I think, so just to answer that, cause I was completely shocked to hear that and it might still work, but it's a case by case build, you know, when you're buying the co-op, yeah. you're just buying a piece of regular real estate that awesome that you can, it won't count towards your debt to income ratio. And for the co-op, it's a case by case basis. Exactly. They'll, they may look at it differently, you know, it's, okay. they have their own way of doing things. No, they do. I speak the language of co-op. <laughs> so feel free to reach out and we'll make that happen. <laughs> um, and then we've got, there was another question or hold on, let's see. Was there any, I think that I have, might've had, cause I wrote some stuff I wanted to make sure I asked you. Um, you know, I know, oh, something I had said I was going to share. And again, guys, more questions, interaction, anything you need, you stop us. I know Brittany's phone number and she will be dropping it later along yeah. with her information so if you're like erica my question i'd like to go over then i'd rather ask my question than your question feel free to interrupt i just put together some questions i think would be helpful for us to know because if we can sell more homes we change more lives we have more fun and ronnie's like yeah let's make that happen <laughs> <laughs> um so i also something that you brought up and i know that it's extremely extremely important for people to feel empowered um, when buying a home because it's it's stressful like there is there's stressful situations when you're the number one reason for let's say domestic violence cases is people are fighting about money or they actually can't afford to move they mm -hmm. think they can't but if they can go or even like just a regular person they're like I'd rather just stay in this little house and we move Ronnie, no, I mean, healthy, happy relationship. We move Ronnie from New York to this house. To How many thousand square feet do you have? 3,000 square feet. Okay, 3,000. He was in Queens, New York, and he had how many square feet before? 910. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on. And what was the price of, that I sold your co-op for? 188. Okay, and what did you, do you mind? I don't know. Do, what did uh, you buy your house for? 180. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's the type of stuff that makes you want to move out of New York. That's for sure. Yeah. We did not practice or rehearse this. If he told me I don't want to talk about it, I would have been fine. And I don't even remember those numbers. He knows because um, it's been a while. Um, but yes, that is, there's options out there. You could, now that we're working virtually, you could be moving to Texas. I mean, there's great real estate over there. <laughs> there's been a lot of that too, with people moving from the city out to Long Island to get out of the congestion which is yeah. a big reason why people are losing out on houses, bidding wars, stuff like that, because people that have the money to pay 
thousands over the listing price are coming out here and paying it just because they want to move, move away. And like you said, everybody's remote now, so they don't care where they're working. They can work from home. It doesn't matter where they are. They just want to get away from the city. So that's a big factor in people losing out on homes right now too. It is a big factor. You know what I meant to ask? I know we had some people and we actually practiced this whole thing. Not really, but we thought about this at the beginning, how we were going to make sure we acknowledge some people here. And we totally <laughs> forgot about that. We, we went rogue. Right. <laughs> what did you say? We went rogue. <laughs> we went rogue. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we did. So I see that there's some important people. And Raina was one of the first people that came to mind, right? And then, then she started laughing when we went rogue. She's like, oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure that because there are some important people and I know that the fact that we've invited people here that I know that are super connected to this cause I love to see um, and we'll go back to Brittany in a second but I love uh, Brittany who's here did, who did you bring who are we thanking from you who do we got here we have let me just scroll to see well we talked about Blanca we have my friend Blanca we have who else one sec I'm scrolling we have well Evan, which Evan is my fiance, full disclosure. He's in the other room asking questions. We have Jackie, who is a realtor that I do business with. We have Teresa, who is one of my clients that we're working with right now to buy a home. We have my soon-to-be mother-in-law, Cheryl, on the call. We have Catherine, who's another realtor, who is actually looking for a home for herself, too, to expand. Who else? We have one of my good, my good friends, Dominique, is on the call as well. So we got a good amount of people here. Thanks, nice. guys. Nice. And I want to make sure that if those, they came here for something, you invited them, they came here for something. It might have yeah. come. This is Brittany's first time ever sharing her story, not about mortgages, but about like her publicly, her story about, you know, her past, right? That like literally she's a powerhouse, right? Like going and navigating real estate needs, taking care of business, taking care of love in the home. She's awesome. P.S. She has a daughter. I don't know where her daughter is, but she might come running or maybe she's sleeping. Um, and I just want to make sure that everyone who came here came, got what they came here for. So if you got what you came here for, can you comment on Brittany's Facebook page? Can you comment on my Facebook page? If you didn't, can you ask the question now while I kick it back over in the chat, whether it's on Facebook and can you share this video? Because we want people to know if you think Brittany did a good job, let people know because she's a rock star and you. you're welcome. And then I want to, I want to go over to um, Rebecca, I know you invited a few people. I think at least one is here and then I'll go last. Um, well, Kim, Kim was here and her internet keeps cutting out. She's trying to get back in right now. So and my other two that I invited were both unable to attend tonight, but they're going to try to catch us next week. May oh, I ask another question, another question to Brittany while, while you're thinking of what sure. else you want to say? Absolutely. Yeah, we know. Oh, yeah. Um, Brittany, I'm wondering if you could address for the, the folks who might be listening that are trying to see about, you know, starting this process of home buying. Can you speak to them and, and clarify like the stages of what the lender does sure. through, from the time that put an offer in all the way to closing? And if you could also speak to the, the collaborative relationship that happens between a lender and a realtor and either the lawyer or title company. Yes. I think that's important for people to understand. That's huge. Yeah. The relationship between myself and the realtor is big because we're a team. You know, that's how we have to work from start to finish. There's different aspects that the realtor needs to handle. There's aspects that I need to handle. So that's a big part of the loan process. Um, from start to finish, once somebody gets an accepted offer, they meet with their attorney, they sign their contracts, they put their down payment. Once I have fully executed contracts, that's when the mortgage process starts. So I do upfront work on all of my loans. Most of the time, what I do is I pre-approve somebody. I take all of my paperwork. I give it over. And by the way, I don't give a pre-approval unless I check income, credit, everything, because I need to make sure that when that person goes to put in an offer, you know, my name is attached to that. I want to make sure that person's going to get that house and there's not going to be any issues. So I collect all the paperwork. I shoot it over to my assistant, Valerie, who is amazing. She is my clone, basically. So her and I work very close. Uh, you can always get a hold of me, but on the off chance that you can't, my assistant is always available as well. So she collects all of the paperwork that she thinks we would need in order to get the loan smoothly into underwriting approved and keep the process going, even before we get a fully executed contract. That way we make sure once that contract comes in, that loan is going to go straight to processing, underwriting without a hiccup, nothing delaying it. It's just going to go through the motions. So your file gets submitted to the processor. As long as she thinks or he thinks that everything is good within the file to submit for an approval, it goes to the underwriter. The underwriter will issue an approval and a commitment. 
either with the appraisal or pending the appraisal. We do not hold files up waiting for appraisals. We will just condition for the appraisal as one of the conditions on the commitment. Once everything on that commitment is addressed and submitted, then the processor packages everything up and gives it right back to the underwriter to officially clear to close the loan. Now, title has to be clear. Um, appraisal has to be good. In reference to title, certain things that we don't care about, COs, missing uh, permits, anything like that, we're good to go. We can still close your loan with all of that. Um, so once the file is clear to close, then that's when it gets scheduled. And that's it, basically, from start to finish. Very good. Thank you. Of course. Anybody else in the, in the uh, chat have questions specifically for Brittany? Eric, I'm sure you've got some wrap up kind of comments, but I don't want to shut anybody out early. I'm on mute, sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I am. I do have wrap up comments and I don't want to shut out anyone early as well. And oh my goodness, look at your fiance. She's so full disclosure. I told her to, this is how honest is, uh, just as a side note. And while I know <laughs> it's coming over to say hi, guys, be careful. Uh, so I said, oh, we could edit Evan's name to say celebrate success crew. So nobody knows it's your fiance. And she's like, all right. I have, a, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> like, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like that, you know, and, and because, you know, like, you know, we need help, right? Like Rebecca stepped in. She's like, here, I got some questions. Let's manage the chat. This teamwork makes the dream work. So here we are. And I'm like, this guy's rocking out. Like, so she, when, I, when I start speaking and when I talk about mortgages, I start going on autopilot and goes like fast sometimes. So he, he's reeling me in a little bit and keeping the questions going. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And so, but yeah, I love that she, you know, he didn't even, he's fully disclosed. She's fully disclosed. This is her fiance. He's here to uh, believes in her and is here supporting her because she's doing a great job. And I also just want to thank the folks that are here and make sure that the people who did come here that I know are getting their questions answered that I know Jessica over in New Jersey, she sells real estate already shared this on her Facebook. Awesome. So as Karen is the original gangster from like the original celebrate your success crew did a YouTube video about why buyers, how I can sell homes anywhere in the world. Like she was like, I don't really get it. Like, can you really help me? I've known her for 20 years. And it was a great question. Like, why, what makes you qualified to sell a home in Florida if you've never sold there? Like, why would I help? Why would you really help me? Or why would I help Raina's daughter over in, wait, are you, you it's Utah, right? Yeah, okay. And it's true because, you know, people have that question. We did a whole show on that answer. So thank you. And uh, Raina, I really want to make sure that I thank you and also let you know that we're here to answer any questions if you have them. Lily, Lily's got like, She's in California. She lives in Florida. She's relocated. She's part of our military. Kudos to Lily. Shante is a realtor. Shante, you came here. I want to make sure you got your questions answered because this is a different way. Like we can't door knock right now. We can't cold call in certain areas or maybe you don't want to because you don't feel safe during COVID. Fiona, I'm so sorry. Your tail's in my face. I'm not sure if people can see that. Um, but yeah, just really Thurman is a past client. Want to make sure he got his questions answered. Tiffany's a new realtor and simultaneously part of the, uh, Tiffany, if you're off mute, can you tell me, uh, what, what, what you want to tell me what you work for the NYPD, but you're not a police officer. What, what do you do? No, um, I am currently, um, a disciplinary investigator with the department of corrections. I have prior experience um, as a probation officer and um, as a private investigator. Yeah. So, and if you're talking about, I was trying to pin her, replace pin, she's not on video, but this is Tiffany. That's who we're talking about. And uh, just really great to know that we have someone who really believes in this mission and what we're doing and making sure we're educated, making sure we're getting the information that we need and making sure we're we're helping as many people as possible. Uh, Shante, you've got a question. And then I also just, I also did not acknowledge, where did he go? Michael Arado. Yeah, I was like, he was here. I think I might've missed a person or two because I put you on this video. And Ronald Reagan also, a past client of mine. He's up there. And Michael Arado here. Michael, what do you do exactly? Tell us. One second. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, so we do... Um... We get like permit work. We do permit work for houses in Long Island. So if you need like, you know, house has open permits or it doesn't have permits or you need COs or you're interested in doing 
uh, new arc, new um, design at your house. We do architectural plans as well. So we're like, we're a full service expediting company, uh, but it, everything's done in house. So we have like architects on staff drawers. We run around to the town for you. We, we do everything. Yeah. And Michael actually is, I, I, can I tell them about what I, why you're at home? Oh yeah, no, no it's fine. <laughs> He's, 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 I mean, amazing. And uh, he's going to be speaking to us soon um, about giving his own information. And again, even though he might be local in New York, then there might be Shante who says, oh, I got my person over here. Because it's not just about the mortgages. It's not just about the, it's also that mindset of anything is possible, right? Anything is possible. Like hearing what she's sharing and then you can say, wow, you know what? My daughter was outbid in Utah. God knows how many times she's ready to give up on buying a home. Nope. Bring on Grateful Realtor. We'll make it happen. I'll take the insight that I get over here. Maybe Michael might say, oh, there's a problem with the house and this permit, this. Make sure you ask this person over here in this state to do this thing. That's actually part of what I do is I work with people local and then support people out of town. So I want to go to Shante. You've got a question. And then Raina, I want to see if you have any questions. Then we're going to pick a guest speaker for next, next week. So if you're interested in speaking, and I know, Rebecca, you're going to be speaking soon. I want to check in which date that is. And I, um, cause I don't remember. So let's go to Shante. What is your question, girlfriend? Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, just real quick, Erica, I know you had mentioned, um, you know, the whole arc of domestic violence and how you help domestic violence violence victims. I just wanted to remind everybody, you may want to check in your respective cities or states or jurisdictions and see if domestic violence victims are protected classes under your local fair housing like they are here in DC. I did mention that to you last night, Erica. Oh yeah, because that is a very good point, knowing whether or not they are protected class and how we might be able to help them. And actually we have a lawyer in New York who can, uh, might even be able to answer that question here. And just Edmund, again, Ed, I at some point love to have you speak as well. We can talk about like, like actually not take over Brittany's time here, but take a spot, talk about your value add. And then Brittany might have a question when she's in, in that moment to talk about mortgages and how she can work together with you. So just sure. co-create. No we love it that you guys are adding the value that we're adding. Not sure what's going on with my settings here. So I'm just going to switch it over. There we are. Um, so, and then did I, did I ask, oh, who else didn't I? I'm, I Rebecca, you wanted to say something. Talk to me. Oh, Talk to you, me. Were, you were going to ask Raina if she had a question. That was oh yeah, Raina, did you have a question? We don't have a home. We rent right now. We both came from uh, abusive relationships and we found each wow. other most blessedly. So we have, um, we built, a, we've been building a business and right now the market is going crazy. Like the average home price went from like 300,000 to 500,000 over the last six months. Where are you? So we're in Southern Utah, St. George area. So we have lots of people moving here, which is good and bad. So I don't know, but yeah, that's, so I don't have any questions about real estate, but I love real estate. I want to get into like, um, I've always wanted to have a passive income and have like, you know, be able to rent to other people and help them maybe start out renting, but then help people that are in need and, and need you know, haven't been able to buy a home, be able to step into that space. So I know where to go when I get to that spot. <laughs> so thank you so much for doing this. This is great. And thank you. Come back next week. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And also, um, you know, you have a big family. I think what do you have between the two of you? How many kids? Between both of us, we have 13 children. Can wow. Can you imagine oh. 13, 13 <laughs> yeah. I have Five one hours. four year old and I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Luckily they weren't all together. We had two when we met still at home. So now we only, and now the uh, youngest is graduating in a month. So pretty soon we might be empty nesters. Be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, and, and you do something special too. So if you're interested, by the way, I, I, 
Rena, I, the more I think about what you guys do, the more value I realize you can provide to homes and businesses. So I think there is a place definitely for you on the show to have your own spot. And I just, I'm so grateful to have so many people here just doing, we're so grateful to have so many people here. I don't think I thank Thurman, by the way, Thurman is a past client of mine. So if I forgot, if I forgot to thank you, please write your name in the chat because the, uh, there's just movement and I love you all. And I just might've forgotten and Shanti's upside down. So that just throws me off. Um, <laughs> and I love it. So, but going back to, I don't know where she went. Uh, Brittany, was there something that you want to add Then Rebecca wants to add? And then we can take a couple moments. Actually, what's so interesting is that the questions and the flow is just beautiful. Um, I want to make sure that we, 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 everyone gets what they came for. And then if you need a couple minutes of Brittany after hours, you know, meaning like after nine o'clock, I'm sure you can borrow her or she can drop her information or her lovely assistant. I'm sure he loves that. <laughs> and drop her my phone number in the group, in the chat there. If anybody has any questions or needs any help with anything, I'm happy to answer all of your questions. I think I did it right. I'm still getting used to all of this. I think I did. Um, <laughs> I did. And if not, we'll get it later. Um, yeah. So She's got information. Rebecca, did you, I definitely, if you're interested, by the way, in having a spotlight on this show and Raina brought up, I mean, I did not know that until right now that both of them came from a domestic violence relationship, came together and now they're here and went from two kids to 13 children. Um, I mean, that is just, and then the blessing that she provides in inviting people here, sharing this gift there's her husband. I've never met you officially. Hi. <laughs> and uh, just really so thankful that we're coming together to save more lives, sell more homes and have more fun. Uh, I wanted to check back in with Raina, not Raina, I'm so sorry, but anyone who wants to speak here and have a platform to add value to the world um, in the world of real estate and beyond, just comment below and we'll reach out to you with a date. Um, and then I just wanted to go back to Rebecca. Was there anything else either in the chat or you wanted to add before we wrap up? Uh, we just need to nail down, I guess, a, a guest speaker for next week. I can take the um, Sunday night, May the 2nd slot. I'm currently okay. in, in Mexico and I, I'm lucky tonight that, that the little squirrels that run the internet cages <laughs> here are functional. You know, they, they, my connection has stayed pretty steady. And so... Uh, but I never know about what's going to happen while we're in Mexico. So I'd rather not try to do it next week when we're still going to be here in Mexico. But I'll take May 2nd. So somebody else volunteer and uh, we'll yeah, let I love it. He's like, let's go. We're not going to up until someone grabs a spot. So I know there was a couple of people here that were potentially interested. So I'm just going to check in. Michael, you're coming back after. And really, it is just a Q&A on a Sunday night. And I'm just, and I know that Ed, I think you might be as well. So I'm going to check in with people who said they might be interested, Raina as well. Do you, hold on, someone's, I'm going to ignore the chat. I'll let Rebecca manage that. Um, Michael, do you want to do next week, next Sunday? Um, no, but I can do the Sunday after if that's good. That's uh, Rebecca's slot. So then you would do the uh, Sunday after that, which would be Mother's Day Sunday. But are you, um, um, are you what's, the, what's the date? Hold on. Be, uh, May the 9th. May 9th. And it'll be 8 o'clock? Yep. Um, I guess I could probably do it. I'll put, put me down for it. Okay. We'll put you down for it. And then we also are now looking for, so he can't do next Sunday. Um, I know that there's some interesting, so I want to check in. We've got, and I, if there's some value that you think you as a human that I'm not seeing, because sometimes when you're leading a show, you're organizing a show, Someone also has a question. So I'm going to let Rebecca manage that, that you might have a value. Did Ed, do you want to? Next do you wanna, week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I could, I could present next week. Sure. Excellent. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So I'll work with you offline um, about how to yeah. get here <laughs> and get, get everything rolling. We appreciate you being here and doing what you're doing. I actually think no talking problem. about, a little bit about what we were talking about offline would be perfect, but okay. also, yeah, but I'm going to let you, what do you, what's really interesting, by the way, as a side note is Brittany spoke to the community. So I'm going to highlight her again. I really, when I highlight her, does that change on anyone's camera or no? Not on mine. I don't know. No, I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The square <laughs> moves to her, but I think it's when she speaks, we don't see you highlighted. I don't know what's happening. I thought it made a huge difference, but whatever. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I remember I actually, the way that Brittany figured out what to talk about, I was, wh- how did we come to this topic, Brittany? Because I want you, what, what are you dealing with all week? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, how did we get to this point? No, like, and it's funny because I, she's like, well, I'll figure out what to talk about. Like, what are you dealing with all week that it begins with a B and ends with a war? <laughs> oh, bidding wars? I know. <laughs> I it begins with a B, baby, um, business, buyers. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, not planned. Obviously, I didn't do a good job. We're not good at that game. I won't play that <laughs> game again anymore. But um, yeah, so we, she's speaking to truthfully what you guys are dealing with at this moment. Yeah. So if you are a business owner in the world of real estate and beyond, and you want to add value to the world and help us, or maybe there's something related to also domestic violence that you think that you could add value to. There's someone who reached out to me today. I don't know what that is. Today saying, hey, Erica, this woman, this man needs this help. And I did not even know that those were things that are wanted and needed. So we're going to work together offline. We have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram page. It's called Seller Break Your Success. I'll be dropping that info um, on Facebook. If we're not friends, free, please friend me. My name is Erica Rose Siegel. And please thank the person who invited you here and do business with them. And if you don't have a realtor in your neck of the woods, I'd love to be a realtor. And just thank you for being here. Thank you for saving lives. Thank you for adding value to the world. And thank you for just being here in this space so we can celebrate your success, our success, and my outcome, our outcome of creating a home, sweet home. Before I complete, Rebecca feels like she's got to say something. Yes. I'm just wanting to put a a big uh, plea out with everyone. Put your thinking caps on early in the week this week and shoot Erica a text message, a phone call, a Facebook message, messenger, however you can reach her, you can find her and give her the names and the contact info of people that you think would benefit from this program. It's real easy for her to send them an invitation and it's simple to use. Obviously, we all got here with those invitations. So please help us grow our community and um, spread the word about this awesome group of people who want to collaborate and make a difference. It'd be really wonderful to have your friends come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that was that was an awesome uh, uh, acknowledgement and just a necessary piece of information. Fiona's so excited. She's coming over to hear about it. Uh, I also wanted you to know that what Ed is going to talk about next week so that people know he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer in New York and he deals with a few things. He deals with real estate law. He deals with wills, estates, trusts, I'm sure divorce, some other things. And so we're going to figure out what's most wanted and needed because he deals with law. And we're going to add that value here next week. Am I, am I accurate with that assessment, Ed? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, great. <laughs> so, and I put on a Facebook page, a few people recommended him. I said, I need a lawyer for a specific thing. And a few people recommended him. And within days, here he was. And this wasn't even the thing. I called him about something else. And then he showed up here. So, folks, um, thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Um, it's your show. I'm just here in service of you. This is about you. So, I mean, yes, it's Celebrate is something I created, but you are now one of the co-creators. You're all co-creating. It's your show. Find us. And I want to just leave it with you. What's your final final before we leave? I just want to say thank you for, you know, even reaching out to me on my birthday and like reaching out with this mission. Because like I said, it's, it's really special to me. I feel like, you know, speaking about our situations with domestic violence can really help people and show them that like, you can get out of it, that you can has, have a successful, happy life. You know, you just have to take the right steps. And I feel like with this mission, we can create a really um, protected space for those people that need to get out of the situations that they're in or got out of the situations that they're in and now don't even know where to start to rebuild their life. So that's huge, you know, and, and I appreciate you having me and having me speak and kind of tell my story and, and where I am in life and what I've done. So thank you. Well, we thank you. We're proud of you and we celebrate you. And so until next time, and we're going to stick around for a few minutes after the show, just in case someone didn't get to ask a question and wants to ask it privately, because we get that there might be a question that you didn't want to ask on Zoom. I mean, you're going to have no choice but to ask it on Zoom or DM her, but didn't want to <laughs> ask it on Facebook Live. <laughs> So thank you for being live with us too. It takes courage to go live and show your face and show what you're committed to. So I appreciate that. We appreciate that. So until next time, we'll see you next week. And this is your Grateful Realtor signing off for now and not forever. And your Celebrate Your Success team, including the pretty kitty. (laughs) 
until next time, we'll see you next week. We're going to talk about everything law and how to make a difference in the world of real estate and beyond. We love you guys. And I'm trying to stop sharing, but maybe, no, we're just recording. We're working that out. Did someone already stop sharing? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a good week. <laughs> no, we're still sharing. I don't know how to get this to stop. It's really cute. Um, hmm. Oh, no. We're still on Facebook. That's cute. Maybe, Ronnie, we can figure that out. <laughs> uh, stop recording. No, it's how to stop sharing on Facebook. Oh, it's over there. That's her. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay, we're here. Oh, that was really funny. I was like, there was somebody covering the button. So that, that last minute, that'll be perfect when you're, um, you can, it's probably.